right. We'll just give it uh, another minute or so, Kelsey, and then you could uh, get started. Sounds good. Yeah, it looks like a few more people have been joining. All right, and I think we got a couple chats that the audio is working, so that's great news. So yeah, thank you to everybody who's joined us. We're looking forward to spending some time with you today for our webinar. I think we'll be starting in just a few seconds here. All right, well, good. Well, again, welcome. Uh, we're pleased to spend this time with you. Um, my name is Kelsey Noyes with Neometrics. And I've been in the 3D world for about 20 years. I've been in the metrology and inspection world uh, for solutions. I'm using a variety of uh, probing and scanning solutions. I have a mechanical engineering degree from University of Minnesota. Uh, that's actually where I'm originally from. I'm from the Midwest. I now live in central sunny Florida. And uh, since joining Neometrics, I've been really involved with 3D printing. And I really like working with all of the very unique applications that our customers have. And today our webinar is industrial challenges solved with Big Rep 3D printers. And we are so excited that we have Big Rep joining us today. Uh, we have Tim Ruffner from Big Rep. He's with us online live. And I'll let him give himself a brief introduction before we get started with the presentation. Cool. Thanks, Kelsey. By the way, uh, a mutual friend of ours, Andrew McEwen, says hi. Uh, I think you know him from the metrology world. Um, oh, great. Yeah, says hi. Hey, everyone. Tim Ruffner here. I'm with uh, Big Rep. I'm the director of sales. I've been in the industry now, not nearly as long as Kelsey has, uh, but about 15 years. And uh, my background stems in everything from metal 3D printers all the way to polymer, with companies like Concept Laser, which was purchased by GE, Desktop Metal, which went public, GPI Prototype, which was purchased by Fathom and went public. So I have a, a and prior to that, actually, I have a, a knowledge, a, a vast knowledge base in traditional manufacturing, including injection molding, CNC machining, die casting. So my whole background for life has been in the manufacturing realm. Uh, so we appreciate you guys joining us today. And, um, I'll, I'll pass it back to Kelsey so she can go over the agenda, talk a little bit about Neometrics before uh, I go in and talk uh, talk about Big Rep. So thank you, guys. Sounds great. Uh, so yes, here's our agenda today. Uh, so we went over our introductions briefly, and I'd go welcome to talk more about Neometrics, explain a little bit about what we do, and then pass it back to Tim, and he'd be happy to share more about Big Rep. Um, and then we're going to talk specifically about applications and customer success stories. Uh, from Big Rep Printers. Um, we'll also review the portfolio. And then finally, we'll end up with some wrap up. And if you have any questions, uh, definitely reach out. And actually, even during the presentation, if you have a question, feel free to chat to us. All right, so Neometrics. So we were founded in 2003. We're in Lake Mary, which is uh, just outside of Orlando. Uh, so we've been providing 3D engineering solutions for almost 20 years. Uh, the services we provide are actually 3D scanning and 3D printing. Uh, so if you have a specific need uh, for a CAD file for a part that maybe you don't have, uh, we'd be happy to scan it for you and provide a CAD file. Uh, we can also inspect the part. So maybe you want to know if the part was manufactured correct. You want to compare the existing CAD file to the part. We can also provide that service. Um, and then also 3D printing. Uh, we can provide parts. Um, if you would like them printed, you can just send us the file. We'd be happy to print them. And we also sell equipment for both 3D scanning and 3D printing. And we um, train you on the softwares for each solution. And we can provide custom training. So specifically, whatever projects you're working on, I will be happy to train you on those. And we have a variety of partners. Uh, Form, Mark Forge, Big Rep, and Tamsis. This uh, presentation specifically is based with Big Rep. 
and we look forward to talking more about that. And I'll pass it back to you, Tim. Great. Uh, yeah, so uh, bigger up here. Um, we are the OEM and Kelsey and, and the friends over at Neometrics is one of our preferred partners uh, down in the Southeast. So uh, they are, you know, they, they service and sell our equipment as needed. Uh, so just a little bit about Big Rep in general. Um, as you can see here on the screen, our mission, to trans our mission is to transform users' productivity and creativity with the easy to use additive manufacturing solutions with the whole ecosystem from software to 3D printers, all the way through the filament, Big Rep itself has, uh, has three systems that you see here on the screen. The Big Rep Pro, which is our flagship system, our Big Rep Studio, which is uh, what we call the Baby Pro. It's uh, not so baby, actually. It is one quarter the size of the Pro, but also quite large. And so we'll go over that here shortly. And the Big Rep One, uh, which is one of our, which is our very first system that we came up with. Uh, so we focus strictly on large format, and we'll talk a little bit about that here shortly. Um, we have a free software that you could you could uh, go right to our website right now and download and check that out. You could put in your STL files. You could run some time, see how long it would take to print on one of our printers, as well as input any material that you currently have you that you are using or that you want to use or one of our materials. And you can see how much that would cost to print with one of our uh, printers. And uh, yeah, as mentioned, the, the software is free and uh, we have a global reseller network, just like Neometrics. We have uh, resellers across the world. Um, we have also 600 machines, uh, well over 600 machines now that are installed in the market. Uh, Big Rep itself, the U.S. headquarters is based in Boston area alongside many other 3D printing companies out there, including Mark Forge, which is uh, Neometrics also offers. Um, and uh, yeah, we also have a, our main headquarters is based outside of Berlin. And then we have a facility out in Asia as well. So we can handle everyone and what they're looking for. So if you don't mind, uh, let's go to the next slide here, Kelsey. Perfect. All right. Yep. Uh, so 3D printing has come a long way over the years. So it started with just simple plastic prototypes um, or even toys. And now it's used for more advanced prototypes and even induced parts. Uh, it's in many different industries. Uh, we've seen a lot of growth, uh, specifically in aerospace and defense, automotive and marine. Uh, they have a lot of different applications uh, from prototyping to molding, um, and like I mentioned, and use parts. And also you'll see art and sculpture. Um, that's something really unique that we've seen with the, the specific with Big Rep being able to do pretty a uh, large size um, sculpture uh, that's, that are 3D printed. And, and also education is really uh, growing. Uh, there, a lot more schools are getting involved and having their uh, technical groups being able to learn hands-on with the 3D printing equipment. I think we have a poll we want to put up. Are, so those of you who are attending, are you currently using 3D printing? I think we'll put up a poll here and let you answer that. Perfect. I think uh, we could we could let them answer it as we continue on and, and we can check that here as we go. Okay. All right. And then I'll switch. All right. Do you want to? Yeah, take perfect. This? Yeah. So let's uh, let's go over Big Rep and uh, let's talk a little bit about what large format printing actually is. Well, of course, we all know large format three D printing is large parts, right? We could print very large parts uh, where you do not need to have post processing, where you have to assemble them. If you know, for example, if you had a an, a desktop printer and you had to print a, a three foot long part. You know, you would have to assemble that, glue it together, figure out how to dovetail that. You know, with Big Rep, you have the ability to print it as one full piece, but that's not just it, right? We're not just talking about large parts. We're talking about the ability to actually print multiple parts on the build plate. And we're going to go over some of that ROI and, and some of the applications here in a second. But large format, you know, is large parts, but also many 
parts on a build plate. And it looks like the, uh, the poll is up now. So you guys get a second to do that as we continue on. Kelsey, if you don't mind going to the next uh, slide here. Okay. Cool. So how is large format 3D printing changing the way parts are being produced? Well, here's some images you can see on the screen here. So one of the main things that we see with 3D printing, of course, is customization. This is coming all across the board, especially in the automobile industry, where you could fully customize what you want. For example, if you wanted to put your, you know, your family crest in there, you could do that. Or if you want to print a full out uh, grill with your family crest on, you could do that as well. Otherwise, you could do certain things like printing your dashboard all in one piece. As you see in that top left image, that is a, a, a vehicle that was done by one of our customers. And they printed that whole middle console in, uh, in one of our big rep printers. So you're able to do that is in one piece. One of the cool parts about uh, our systems and 3D printing in general is uh, it's, it's hands-off manufacturing, right? You hit that print button, you let it print overnight. And I always like to say, it's like an extension of who you are as a human, right? Like if I, I, I don't wanna have to worry about you know, hiring somebody and, and, you know, having them babysit or, you know, maybe they got baby mama drama. I don't know. I don't, whatever that case is, you don't want to have to deal with an employee calling in sick, right? In this case, you could just let the printer go and it prints all day, all night and, uh, you know, get it done, pull the parts right out of it. So in that top right image, you could see a very large part that was printed on one of our printers. And then you have the small production series of parts in that bottom right image. And that is multiple parts for production of components where you don't need to have tooling or you don't need to offshore you could bring manufacturing back here to the states right one-off parts are very important as well in that bottom left image you could see some really cool parts that you know could be put into museums or arts and crafts all that fun stuff so the 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 limits aren't there you can put yeah, a bunch of yeah. whatever you want with it yeah, those right. are great examples. I especially like the multiple parts because uh, that's something that I, I don't think we think about often. Uh, you don't have to change out the, the printer every time you need another part. So you can have many parts printing all weekend. So it's really nice to be able to take advantage of that uh, build plate. Definitely. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's go on here. So some of the other advantages as as Kelsey just mentioned the full out production of parts there at same image in that top right corner. Uh, you know, we have plenty of uh, customers who are doing production of parts. You know, obviously most of them are under NDA. So we, <laughs> we try to show what we can to you guys to get an idea and think outside the box a little bit here. Uh, so full out production and printing full scale of components at bottom right image is a full out prototype that you can try. You could you could feel, you could see it, you could try it or sit in it, do whatever you need to do to see how it's going to be uh, before you go into production. We all know how that goes. Design freedom, you know, you have the ability to pretty much do whatever you want when it comes to design. Uh, one of the cool parts about that is, you know, on some of our systems, you know, let's just say you had internal channels that were going inside of it or tubes or maybe even a manifold. You could do water soluble supports in it. So those supports would just fall right apart when you dunk it in some water. So you have the ability to, to do some, some wild geometries, right? And then you don't have to worry about piecing them together. So you have such a large build area that if you are to actually print a full out scale part, you don't have to worry about assembling them. Like I mentioned earlier, if you had some desktop printers. In this case, you print one full out part, let it go, let it print, take it off and, uh, and start using it from there, which also falls in line with less post-processing, not just the, the water soluble supports, but of course not having to assemble it if you have multiple pieces, right? And uh, not having a change over build, right? So a lot of times what happens is, you know, maybe you have a certain build area and you have to continuously putting new parts on it with a large build plate. You could put tons of parts on that build plate where you don't have to continuously keep changing over that, that, uh, that build on, on other printers. So some of the applications that suit really well for not just uh, big rep, but 3D printing in general, uh, you can see here is prototyping, some tooling. What I like specifically is layup tools for maybe fiberglass or carbon fiber. 
uh, some patterns, molds. You know, one of the things that a customer of ours is using, they'll make a master pattern, a very large part. They'll put that into a box, pour some platinum silicone around it, make a full out urethane cast mold. And then from that mold, you could do 30 to 40, 50 parts out of that one mold by making a master pattern. Same goes with, uh, you know, some of these other processes, like for example, investment casting. There's materials out there where you could do investment casting, or as you see here in that bottom left image, uh, some castings for, you know, concrete and some other things that, uh, that material options give you. And then lastly here, you got uh, some, uh, oh, sorry, that, that bottom right image is some end use parts that, you know, can be put outside. There's material options such as ASA that it is a UV stable that you could put out there. Besides not just that, in that top right image, you can see that it is a fixturing device. And uh, that is a very useful application for not just, again, our printers, but many 3D printers out there, jigs, fixtures. I like to do a lot with go, no go gauges where you could test and make sure that your tolerances are what you expect them to be. So let's talk a little bit about some of these prototypes that uh, have been printed with some of our systems here. So you can print full scale functional prototypes because you're going to be printing in the material that is typically gonna be used for injection molding, right? So again, if you're gonna be printing with ABS, you could, or you're gonna be doing injection molding with ABS, you could print it in ABS, you could test it out, see what it looks like, see what it feels. Uh, you can see that Zola over here in the top right corner is printing prototypes uh, for their trucks that they have. Um, and we have some on our website, uh, maybe Abby could post a link in there. There's a case study that we did with them. We could, we could see a little bit about what they're doing with our printers. Um, and then of course, Canyon, you can see there in the bottom right image that uh, that beautiful Big Rep 1 system over there in the corner, and they are printing legit uh, uh, bikes, so you can test them out. Uh, we've done this with some other customers as well, and uh, it works really, really well, especially with some of our really cool materials like uh, carbon fiber, right? So one of the cool things about it is you're going to iterate, iterate quick, which means that you're going to fail fast, which means that you could continuously iterate faster, and this way you could avoid some of the outsourcing, we're gonna go over some of this here in a few minutes where some of the different return on investment with some of the customers who have our systems and how much they've saved by doing that or even bridge tooling. And uh, speaking of tooling, here we go. We're gonna talk some about the jigs fixtures that we have. You could customize the tools. Uh, I worked uh, previously with, uh, with somebody who made a specific fixture for a painting booth where they could Hold the, hold the parts that they're doing and multiple parts and then they, they can paint those, right? That's the same as you see here in that top right corner with Ford, that is that fixture that we just talked about a second ago. Uh, so this is, this is great for when they're holding it in for welding. And then the same for that bottom right image there, you know, you could use it for a go-no gauge, make sure that what you're, what you're manufacturing is within tolerance, right? So there are specific dial pin holes that you could put in there. Okay, well, maybe this fits, if it doesn't fit, well, maybe that part had an issue during manufacturing. Now you know. And so you could use that for quality control. So thinking a little bit outside the box, it's more so jigs, fixtures for the manufacturing. Maybe you could hold a part down in your CNC machine. You could put some, uh, yeah, so Abby's sending in here in, in the chat. You can see some of the different uh, jigs and fixtures that have done with some case studies. But um, yeah, this is, a, this is a, a really good application. And uh, reducing the material cost, right? When you're doing this tooling, you don't have to worry about cutting down, doing CNC machining, which uh, has lots of waste. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, patterns and mold making. Uh, one of the large things that, uh, that I, I just talked to you guys about is making some of those urethane castings or layup tools. You know, one of the cool parts about this is you don't have to CNC machine a huge pattern which could take a long time to machine, not only that, but a lot of waste and the lead times uh, for something like that could be uh, astronomical. You're talking maybe six, eight weeks just to get a, a tool machine, depending on uh, uh, somebody's production schedules. But in this case, you can literally just hit that print button, let it go overnight, maybe the next day, pull that fixture rate or pull that, uh, that pattern rate out and start uh, putting some fiberglass or or carbon fiber right on top of that layup tool. And uh, you can see here the top right image, a, uh, a mold that was, uh, that was also done. So you could, you could do that. You 
like I said, you could do urethane castings, layup tools. There's so much that you could do with the patterns and mold making that you just have to really think about it outside the box a little bit. A lot of customers will utilize this technique to bridge the manufacturing from, from low production to middle production to high production volumes, where maybe they're waiting for a, a, an injection mold tool to come and it may take, you know, three, four, five months. In this case, you could start making these uh, these urethane cast tools right away. Yep, it also saves uh, space on storing all the original molds. Uh, so there's definitely some some great uses. Um, I think we have another uh, survey question we wanted to ask. You know, what are some of your applications? Um, so I think that'll pop up here in a little bit. So when you see that, feel free to answer it. And we're always interested to see what you guys are looking to do because, you know, as we continuously grow the technology, we want to base it around manufacturing methods that you're currently doing. So definitely would love to hear more about that. So you can see here that not only are you able to actually do jigs, fixtures, tooling patterns, but actual end use parts. You know, what you see in that top right image is uh, uh, somebody who uses our system called JK Automotive. They have our studio and they legit printed that whole dashboard on one of our printers in one piece. And then you could see in those, uh, there's a little inlet, that gray area is also a magnetic inlet. So those were also 3D printed. Uh, what's cool about this is, let's just say in the automotive industry, uh, custom automotive, you can't find specific components anymore because they're just not available. You know, you might have a 1957 Chevy, but you can't find some of the parts because it's obsolete. That's what 3D printing could do for you, right? You could take a part, you could model it in, Inventor, SolidWorks, whatever program that you're using, export that STL file and start doing it. The other thing is fully customizing it, right? If I'm, an, if I'm doing full custom automotive designs, for example, like JK, I could talk to the, to the customer who's buying that vehicle and wants to customize it and say, you know, what is it that you want to see different? Do you want something to be a little more ergonomical? Do you want different colors? Do you want it to, you know, mesh well with your ideas? So let's go over some of the success stories here. So you guys have an idea of the lead time savings, the cost savings, and we'll go over some of those ROIs here in a second. Uh, you can see here from Ford, uh, these are, uh, and actually all these customers here that you see are, uh, you know, they, they range from everywhere. JK Automotive being a, a small custom automotive shop that does really high end um, custom cars. And then you got everyone from the Fords and Kawasaki's all the way to, uh, you know, cus customers who are making large sculptures that go inside malls and buildings and fun stuff. What you see here on this left-hand side, it, that production fixture, that welding fixture we talked about earlier, um, that is now that it reduced the lead time by 94%. The reason being again is, you know, not just how ergonomic and that geometry is on that particular component, but if I had to machine that part, I had to set it up for one part for just a fixture. I gotta, I gotta, you know, do my milling path, set my G-code, put it on the machine. And you think about the size of that part, you have to have a CNC mill that is large enough to do that. And if you don't, then again, you're back to, you're back to making multiple pieces and gluing them together, which we wanna stay away from mostly because when you do that, you, you could deviate your tolerances by doing that. Building it all as one piece eliminates that, right? So 94% lead time savings, 75% cost savings on this, uh, that's just astronomical. It's just crazy. I, I mean, it's just amazing, right? I mean, you really think about that and the amount of time and cost it saves just it blows your mind. Here in the middle, Kawasaki, cost savings of 85% for this fixturing device as well. And uh, the quote says, I'm sure you guys can read it, but I'll read it for you. Uh, I was able to modify their part to improve the fit for the clamping device, 3D print my part and swap them out the next day two hour lead time, you can literally put it in there. And if you need to change your design or you need to make something fit, two more hours later, you have another part. And this is the beauty of 3D printing guys. Then all the way, all the way in the right here, we have somebody who utilized a now web 12 week design cycle. 
100% 3D printed components. Wild to even think that we're at that day and age now where you could actually utilize parts. And in this case, an airless tire, right? I mean, it's just, it's just amazing what we could do. Quote here says, a radical new approach to product development, seamlessly spanning digital simulation to custom manufacturing. Just, just still blows yeah. my mind. I think the tires are TPU, if I remember. That was pretty amazing that that entire bike is 3D printed. Yeah, it's, uh, and I, again, I think Abby, we could uh, share some information on the narrow bike. So you guys could check that out when you have some time. And uh, let's go over some of the printers now. So we went over the applications. We went over what you could do with it, thinking outside the box. Now let's talk a little bit about these printers. We have the Big Rep Pro, which is our flagship system, our Big Rep Studio, which again is one quarter the size of ours that are the Pro being a meter and uh, the, the Studio being uh, a quarter of that. And the Big Rep One, again, named uh, one for the one meter cubic uh, footprint that it has. Uh, so we'll go over that here shortly. And let's start first with the uh, with the studio. I think Kelsey, if you wanted to talk a little bit about what you got, you guys have a studio there, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep, we have the the Studio G two here. We uh, use it a lot. Um, it's right in in our facility, which is an office environment. And so, something I wanted to point out was how quiet it is. Uh, we've had a, a few comments that you can't even hear it print. Um, I think. Just being, you know, how big they are and the industrial size, you kind of expect it to be really noisy, um, but it's really quiet and we've printed beautiful parts. A um, lot of uh, fun projects here, like we have printed some helmets, some stools, and and definitely customers keep us busy with us sending them or sending us parts to print for them too. That's awesome. I love it. One of the cool things I love about the studio is that it's fully enclosed. Uh, which gives you the ability to print some pretty amazing materials such as ABS, ASA, uh, some nylon materials like that PA66 that you see up here on the screen, uh, some carbon fiber materials as well. One thing I do want to point out is our systems are open source materials. Again, the, the free, free software, open source materials, which means that you could buy the materials from anyone you like, or you could just buy it straight from uh, Neometrics. And then the profiles are already set up in the software. So you could just choose your material, choose a setting that you want to utilize, whether it be uh, you know 0.1 millimeter layer height or 0.4 millimeter layer height, uh, and then and just hit print and go. The studio itself, like I said, is, uh, is one quarter the size of the meter, so about 40 inches and and the X, about 20 inches in the Y and about 20 inches in the Z. It's a little bit less in the travel because of the extruders on there. Layer height resolution, all the way down to 0.1 millimeters and up to 0.4 millimeters. The print bag gets up to about 100 degrees Celsius. So that gives you the ability to do some pretty amazing materials. And the nozzle diameter on that is 0.6 millimeters. The reason why we use a 0.6 instead of a 0.4 is so you get print uh, faster. And get yeah, we love more. We also love that it's enclosed, uh, especially being in Florida. Uh, humidity is something just that we deal with on a daily basis. Um, so it really helps with some of the materials um, that are a little bit more sensitive to water, um, specifically the supports, the water soluble supports we've been able to use a lot um, because we're taking advantage of that enclosure. So, yeah, it's, it's, and a touch on that, just a touch on that as well. What's really cool about the, uh, the Big Rep Studio is it also, uh, can house the material within the system, which is a controlled environment. So this, the material is not seeing any moisture inside there, right? Because it's fully enclosed inside that system. The Big Ref One, which has been around for quite some time, we are now on version four of this, uh, which you see here on the screen, which was at, our, at the uh, Rapid Show that was in Detroit not too long ago. A big rep one, mean, meaning one meter, is a printed volume of about 40 inches in every uh, axis, uh, a little less travel. So as you can see here, 39 and a half, again, that is uh, because of the extruders that are on there. Um, the materials that you can print on this are a little bit less than the, than the Studio and the Pro. And the reason being, again, is because, as Kelsey mentioned, it not uh, those systems are being enclosed and, and this one is not fully enclosed. Although what you do see here is an optional add-on enclosure that the Big Rep One can have. Uh, it's still not fully insulated like the, uh, the Studio and the Pro is. So 
you know, it's, it's kind of limited. You cannot do some of the, uh, the ASAs and, and the ABS materials because of that. The nylons, there is, uh, you know, some limits to materials on this. So we like to call this our, uh, our creative line versus more of the industrial line. Um, what's cool about this, though, is you got layer height resolutions from 0.3 all the way to one millimeter. The reason why we could do that is you got nozzle diameters of 0.6, one millimeter, and two millimeter nozzle diameter. Why do you want two millimeter nozzle diameter? Man, you just want a rough prototype. You don't really care about you know the the surface finish. You just need that part tomorrow. Uh, print it two millimeter nozzle, one millimeter of layer height. That thing is smoking fast. Um, yeah. So uh, this is this is the big rep one you see here. Uh, what's cool about the big rep one as well is it does have the ability to add. Uh, uh, filament dry box so it is a it's a box that connects to the printer so it keeps the filament dry uh, inside there so no moisture to get inside there it is not a uh, temperature controlled like the pro in the in the studio but it does keep the material dry and, and from withstanding the elements such as like Kelsey mentioned earlier that BVOH the the uh, water soluble support you don't have to worry too much about the uh, the moisture catching that I mean it's water soluble right so moisture and Water soluble, why not the best two to mix together there? One of my favorite materials, by the way, that you, that you see on, on all these systems is our material, which is called Pro HT. That Pro HT is a, uh, a simulation of like, uh, uh, acts like an ABS, ASA like material. It can withstand those elements that, are, that you're used to with that, but it doesn't require all that extra uh, enclosure and heat and all that crazy stuff and the fumes that are coming out of it. You don't have to worry too much about that with that Pro HT. So that Pro <laughs> HT is like it printing an ABS, but you can print it on the one or you can print it on any of the systems, right? Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that material. We actually do a lot of prints with Pro HT. It's a very successful. Uh, we really like how easy it is to use. Uh, we've recommended it to customers and they also have really enjoyed that material. So I'm glad you mentioned Pro HT. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so Pro HT is is our flagship material that we have. We also have a high temp material which prints uh, really well. Um, also, it's a uh, it's a higher temperature material. What I love about the Pro, again, this is our flagship system. The Pro is uh, it is the workhorse, man. This this thing flies. It prints super fast. Uh, you can print a, a wide range of materials on this. It has the option to have a flexible build plate. So you could pull the build plate out of the machine, bend it, and the parts just pop right off, which is super cool. Uh, it, the Pro has uh, the Bosch Rexroth MXT controls, which allows you to print highly accurate components super fast. Um, the Pro has a build envelope about 40 inches by 38 inches and 38 and a half. So about a meter cubed again, uh, there is some travel because this is enclosed versus the one. So this is a little bit less because of the extruder again going to the top. Uh, but everything inside here is super cool. One of the things that the Pro has is two compartments on each side of the printer that can house eight kilograms of material. So it is fully controlled by the temperature in the machine. And so you don't have to worry about uh, moisture getting in that material as well. What you see here on that image and that top left side of it and that orange is our HMI. And that is a Windows-based HMI, which is also really cool because you could do a lot of stuff with static IPs and logging and, and pictures, you know, all that fun stuff. Easy to use, right? So this is, this is what we're trying to make uh, portray to you guys is how the ease of use on the Pro. It's, it is a plug-and-play system. Hit that print. Let it go. Uh, you can switch out materials really fast. Calib it's semi-auto calibration, so you don't have to sit yeah. there and worry about the calibration of it. Just a just an amazing, amazing. Yeah, you know, like you mentioned, it's a it's a workhorse and it's it's ready to go immediately. Uh, that's something else that's just so incredible. We'll we'll show up to do the installation, but it's really just kind of training and just making sure everything is running correctly. But you can do prints the, the same day, um, yeah. so it's ready to use immediately. Just to give you guys an idea of how fast this machine is, our pro, if you're printing on the one it'll print it about uh, twice as fast. So let's just say it takes six hours on, on the big rep one, it'll take about three hours on the pro. Um, and uh, yeah, so you could do a one millimeter or a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. 
and you could do layer resolutions up to 0.6 millimeters as well. And the print bag gets up to 100C, very similar to uh, the studio. And the, uh, the extruder or the nozzle could get up to about 285C. So you could do uh, some really good materials that you could find from anywhere. And as Kelsey mentioned, like when you guys get a machine, one of the big reps, it is installed by them, handled service, sales, you know, these guys stand behind the, our products. And this is a reason why Neometrics is a preferred partner of ours, because that is exactly what they do. They stand behind their products. And that, that's what is important to us as a company. Yep, we will come into the installation and training. And like you said, we're constant support. So any questions, customers definitely give us a call and we can answer it on the phone or we'll go do a visit. So that's Yeah, true. love it. Mm -hmm. So now let you guys know a little bit about the machines. Let's go over some of the return on investment so you guys have an idea what this is going to cost and how you can bring back some of that money really quick, especially if you're outsourcing right now. Uh, if you're doing that or if you have uh, multiple machines and you're assembling them, uh, multiple components, this is a, a really good idea to show you some uh, hours of use, what the labor might cost, some of the material costs. Again, you could you could plug into our system whatever material you want, whether it be ours or something that you find uh, off Amazon, for example, and put in what that gram uh, cost is. All you got to do is whatever the amount of grams it is and the cost is divide it out and find out what that cost per gram is. It's uh, I think it's like five cents a gram, if I forget, but it's something for Pro HD. It's, it's very inexpensive per gram. Um, and uh, let's go over some of the different manufacturing methods. So you can see here that this is a, uh, a part that Nikola Motors had done. And uh, so let's just say, for example, the printer cost is $70,000. Outsourcing four of those parts uh, per month, right? Each one they were outsourcing cost about $5,000. First off, just looking at that parts of machine it alone just hurts my head, the amount of waste that's going to get. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention is not just the waste, but you could actually reduce the weight with the infill inside the inside the, uh, the parts, right? So you could control that in the software. So if you're trying to have a very robust, strong part, like a carbon fiber fill nylon, you could put uh, the infill in there to reduce tons of weight, which is great for like aerospace and you know those who are trying to reduce fuel costs. Uh, going back to this, $5,000 a part, so $20,000 a month, they were outsourcing. The material cost was about $250 a part. So they were paying about $1,000 a month in material, minus some depreciation. You're talking, they're probably saving about $17,500, $18,000 alone just on that one part on that one that's just that one part and that's that's not using the whole months of, of build time right imagine all the other parts you could put on there and and you could print multiple components on that build plate so if you have multiple jobs that you need to try you could put it all on that build plate and let it go that is an insane return on your investment so it says here three to four months payback I like to say probably less than that, because again, you're not just working on that one part, you're working on more parts, right? You want to get some uh, some more parts out the door. Well, nope, that's a good example. And like you said, it doesn't actually take long to justify it for a lot of applications. And if, if you guys want us to look at one of your parts, definitely send us files. We can help you um, through this with the numbers, uh, if unless you want to do it yourself. But um, if you want help, like I said, we're, we're happy to, to look at that for you. Yeah, I mean, it's, Let's do that. I mean, that 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 would be a, a really good goal is to just send your parts over to Kelsey. Let us review it, see the application and uh, give you a breakdown on what that would cost to print. And uh, you get an idea. So if you're outsourcing it or if you're doing uh, in-house on multiple machines and how much time and, and stuff it would save you. Uh, yeah. So now we're going to walk into some of the questions. We'll get you some answers. There's one more poll that popped up on the screen here. Really appreciate you guys taking the time to do these polls. I know everyone's busy here. We'll finish up in just a couple minutes. Uh, this one is, how can we help you on your 3D printing journey? Um, we could do that free print analysis. Do you want us to print you a part? Kelsey would love to put a part in there, print you mm -hmm. it, and ship it out to you so you could evaluate it, and you can get that benchmark in, try it yep. out and see what it's like. And if you can see on the screen, we have uh, contact information for both of us. So there's uh, my email and phone number. We have Tim's information as well. So feel free to reach out to either one of us. Um, we'd love to set up a, a meeting. We look at your parts. 
Um, or if you have a specific part that you just need some help printing, go ahead and send it my way and we can, we can print it for you as a service. Uh, so we'd love to work with you. And yeah, so we certainly appreciate the time that you spent with us today. Thanks for answering our survey questions. Yeah, I we had hope... one question. We had two questions that came in real fast, Kelsey, before we let oh, everyone we did. go. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. I just want to answer those real fast. Uh, one of the questions is, uh, what materials can the pro print with? Uh, I love that question uh, because the pro could pretty much print any material except for some of the highly super engineered grade materials like all temp and peaks. Uh, but yeah, nylons, carbon fiber filled nylons is a really nice nylon 12 uh, with carbon fiber that prints really nice on the pro. Um, there's some other materials that we've played around with that look really nice, like a 35% filled carbon fiber filled nylon as well. Uh, ASA, ABS, um, you know, all these materials, TPU, all these materials, uh, most of the machines can print with, but the Pro is, is the machine for you. And uh, the last question was, can it print uh, carbon fiber nylon? But yeah, I mean, it's, it's but yes, yes, it can. Oh, good. All right. Got those questions. So were there any other questions that anybody chatted in that we've missed or looks like you got them all? Nope, that's uh, that, that we're good right. on questions. Uh, okay. Oh, wait, uh, do you have problems with some materials like PLA breaking inside the guide tube? Uh, sorry, um, when the material gets older, this is a common problem in desktop. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, really good question, Tom. Um, nope, um, so the, the thing about PLA is because you know, PLA is a very versatile material in itself, but inside our machines. It's not a PTFE tube that you're used to, right? So if on a desktop machine, for example, like on an Ultimator, you're gonna have a PTFE tube, or you know, if you got some of these Creality Ender 3s, uh, you'll have a Capricorn and that PTFE tube that goes through. Um, it's very tight in there. In our machines, matter of fact, there's this very small PTFE tube, but it's not, it doesn't go through the whole machine. The reason being is because of the, the the bill plate is so large that you can't have a PTF tube from one side of the corner and go to the back side of the corner because then it'll start kinking. So actually the, the material itself is, is not in a PTF tube at all. It is just hanging out inside the machine. This way it stays nice and clean. It does not have any kinks. It's not going to break. And even furthermore, it is gonna stay away from moisture because it's inside that heated element to keep it away from that. I hope that answers your question, Tom. Feel free to reach out to uh, to Kelsey, and I think she's going to finish up here. She's going to give you her uh, email and phone number as well. Yep. So my email is on there. It's Kelsey at neometricstech.com, and my phone number is 407-620-4078. Uh, so like I said, feel free to reach out to me if you have additional questions or if you want to talk about anything specific. Uh, but we thank Big Rep and Tim for joining us today. This was really a lot of fun. Uh, we love working with you guys and we look forward to continue working and uh, solving our customer solutions. And then there's my contact information right there as well. Uh, Timothy.Ruffner at BigRep.com. Again, uh, anything in regards to applications and benchmark, just reach out to Kelsey. We'll support them. Uh, Add us on LinkedIn. That'd be great. And Tom asked one more question real fast before we, uh, sure. before we dip out. Uh, he asked, for the UV resistant materials, how long can they be outside in the weather? Really good question. Um, this all plays in with how it's being printed. One is, what's your infill like? Are you printing 15% infill, 50% infill, 80% infill? It all kind of plays in there. So I would say it's a little bit geometry dependent, but just like normal materials like ASA, ABS, which are in, in the elements all the time, uh, it's the same thing. So the materials do not change. How they manufacture the materials is taking injection mold pellets and uh, they literally put that into a machine like it's injection molding, but they extrude it out through a, a, a tube and it comes out as filament. So it is literally the injection mold material that you would use, but put into a filament. So anything that you wouldn't typically use out in the elements, such as nylons, ABSs, ASAs, will, print, will be just fine as normal. Hopefully that answers your question, Tom. All right, guys, thank you so Great. much for your time. Really appreciate it. And uh, enjoy the rest of your week. And uh, we look forward to seeing some parts from you guys and printing you guys some samples. That's right. Thanks, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye.